Greetings, welcome back to my channel. This is Heted and many of you who may have watched my previous video, The Sacred Wisdom of the Master, would have been left with the impression that I was saying that God was a physical being only. But let me explain a little further for you. In the scriptures that were read, one in particular, Exodus 31 verse 18, where it says, And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. All I was saying is that, okay, if God had a finger, it means that he had a hand which the finger was attached to. Clear? If he had a hand, it means he had a forearm which was also attached to a shoulder, making him physical. Physical being solid, finger, which is bones, liquid, blood, blood vessels running through his hands, liquid, and I was going to add a gas is gas day but also let me go to exodus 33 verse 11 where it says god spoke to moses was corresponding to moses face to face and it even made it clear as a man speaking to his friend so he had a face so he has body parts also exodus chapter 3 verse 4 where you read where moses is speaking to God who was in a burning bush. A burning bush means gas as the burning bush. Gas giving off carbon dioxide so he was in a gaseous state in fire. So that's clear that God was his composite is matter. Solid liquid gas. But then you have and other people will say this. Well, God is a spirit and those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes, that is in the scriptures. That is in St. John chapter 4, verse 24. Let me get it for you. And it says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So there you have it. God is also a spirit, so he's not a physical being only, but he's also a spirit. But spirit vibrate outside of solid, liquid, and gas. So as I explained before in the previous video, and I'll put the link below, that as the vibrations of matter speeds up or vibrates faster, then it becomes less visible to the physical eye. So therefore, as it said, solid, visible, liquid, becoming, the, the, the particles are vibrating faster, gas, less visible, invisible, and going to spirit, which is even finer vibration, which is even less visible. But that will be clarified, and that will be elaborated on by my astute brother, Man in Black, I welcome him, Raho Tep, and look out for his videos on this channel. So check it out. We'll stay tuned to our uploads. Come forth, brother Raho Tep. Thank you. As you've heard, this class has mentioned vibrations, modern science, and God. That's the title of this class. So, the sister talked about the burning bush. What must be stated is that in that chapter of Exodus, chapter 3, it is saying the angel of God and God himself, Yahweh himself, the Lord himself, Jehovah himself, appeared in a burning bush as fire. So, if God appeared as fire to Moses, then God was vibrating, as the sister said, at the third state of matter, the gaseous state. 
of fire. But yet, as we know, as all of you watching this know, when you mention the word God, it is synonymous with heaven and hell. Because God created heaven and he created hell. So God deals with fire because both of us who do not worship him in spirit and truth will be going there according to Christians. So if that is the case and God deals with fire, you can see the correspondence doctrine where he deals with fire and came as fire so he vibrated as fire. But in vibrating as fire as the third state, he also had to have come as the fourth state. Higher than ordinary gas fire, he came as the higher state of fire, which is the fourth state of matter. Called plasma. So God, in order for him to get to the gas state of fire, had to pass through the plasma state of fire because plasma is created at extremely high temperatures and is a form of fire. So God went from heaven, so called heaven, as a spirit entity and slowed down vibrations to appear as fire, gas fire, ordinary fire, third matter fire, but not before he passed through the fourth state as plasma. A plasma is matter at an extremely high rate of vibration and frequency. It is different from the so-called three states of matter because it occurs when electrons are stripped from the atoms. When this occurs, you have a situation where the electrons are now moving freely. They are not tied to their opposite charge, the proton, as in the state of solid, liquid and gas. The electrons are free to move about and in being free, they then interact more vibrantly with electromagnetic forces. But yet, let's get back to God. Because in this scripture, Moses says that the bush didn't actually burn. So in reality, this scripture is not even talking about fire. Because Moses said the bush did not burn. So in the gaseous state of the fire where he said he wanted to witness this great sight of God as fire, it can't be talking about fire, could it? You see, pastors, ministers, reverends, deacons, church elders, Hebrew Israelite elders, rabbis, most do not know their scriptures as well as they think they know. In fact, let's go further and look at the book of Exodus and the doctrines of the sacred wisdom of Tehuti, namely the doctrines of correspondence, the doctrine of mental, and the doctrine of vibration. Let me put that on the board for you. Because when you look at these doctrines, Correspondence, mental, and vibrations. This is doctrine two of Tehuti, correspondence. Doctrine one, where all the other eight doctrines are based on, or the foundation, because all is mental, everything really is mental, is doctrine one. That's the primary doctrine. Doctrine three is vibration. So we're dealing with one, two, three. Or in this case, Two, one, three. Correspondence, mental, and vibration, the sacred wisdom of Tohuti, which is available, sister? SMP books at yahoo.com. SMP books what? At yahoo.com. Thank you. That's the availability of the sacred wisdom of Tohuti, the mind, and your potential. The point being, we're going to look at God, Moses, and ourselves through the eyes of the doctrine of correspondence, 
the doctrine of mental and the doctrine of vibrations. Because if you turn to Exodus 32, because this chapter is very interesting, fascinating, enlightening, because Moses is talking to God about his intentions, talking to Yahweh about his premeditated actions that he wants to kill off the Israelites, kill his people because he's unhappy with them, because they're ignorant. And Moses reasons with God and says, God, that's going to look bad amongst the people who know you did this, if you do it, because it will look like that you took us out of Egypt, took the Israelites out of Egypt to kill us when we could have been living there despite the harsh condition and we still be alive. That doesn't look good if you then take us out and then kill us because you are fed up with us. You know what God does? God ponders on this and then and I quote, And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto the people. I know many of you are having a heart attack because God realized his wrong mind state, his wrong intentions, his bad behavior. What do we see with the doctrine of correspondence here, which makes things all clear? That's why we're promoting it, because you will see the truth, and the real truth will set you free. What do you see in the doctrine of correspondence? Well, you see that Moses corresponded with God, communicated with God, and asked him to rethink his thinking, rethink his thoughts. What else do we see through the doctrine of mental? We see that God checked himself, checked his mind state, pondered upon his actions, and then changed his what? Yeah. Changed his what? Yeah. Alright? What do we see through the doctrine of vibration? We see that God, in changing his mental, his mind, his being, we see that he cooled down his vibration like we do when we're angry. We're going to do a thing. Deal with a situation. Deal with a situation. And then we're like, you know what? Hey, let me just cool. No matter with it. Don't do it. It's wrong. It's wrong. And then what do you do? As in the case with God, you change your mind. You change your thought patterns. You change your vibrations. The vibrations of God change. He called down just like me and you because he was in his what? Solid, liquid, gas state of physical matter and acted like a mortal. You can't deny it. You can't deny it in the scriptures. It's right there in Exodus 32. God repented from his evil. But yet, let's go further. When you look and take into this account further, a little further, because we're going to go into something else with the doctrine of mental gender as well, right? This seventh doctrine, the doctrine of gender, you have this man, mental gender, this man, Moses, a man who reasoned above God's reasoning to convince God, to suggest to God that he was wrong. So in play now is the doctrines of suggestion which was executed by Moses and the God doctrine which he conveyed by changing his mind. The God doctrine and the suggestion doctrine. We're not talking anything to do with religion now. We're going to go into it a little bit more. So to reiterate, Moses exercised the doctrine of mental gender in convincing 
God through his God doctrine because he himself was appointed a God by God in Exodus 7 verse 1 where it says Yahweh, Jehovah the Lord, made Moses a God. So he had the ability to reason above God. And he did reason above God, otherwise God would not have repented and changed his mind. Yes? Yes. So what we have here now is the doctrine of gender, mental gender, the God doctrine and the suggestion doctrine in effect. Let me write that on the board as well. When you have this doctrine of gender, it is the most prevalent doctrine in life. Believe it or not, and we don't ask you to believe, check it out. Check out the reasoning. Because in this doctrine of gender, the seventh doctrine, right, and we're highlighting mental gender here, right, you have two aspects of the doctrine of mental gender. You have the God doctrine and the suggestion doctrine. And we know about the God and the suggestion doctrine because we just explained that God, who was in control, conveyed a message to the so-called bigger God and changed his mind. The God doctrine deals with leaders. Strong characters, people who are creative, people who are, and this is a very important word, influential. Those people, some of you watching this, are of that mold, of the God doctrine, have that God character. You're a leader, you're a strong character. People follow you. Now, obviously, the doctrine of suggestion is the lesser. The doctrine of suggestion, suggestion entails most people, those who what? follow, those who are weak-willed, those who are shadows or echoes of others, meaning that they just follow blindly or knowingly. Basically, you have the God doctrine of those people who have influential characters, will stronger than most people, and they send out messages, and then the people of the suggestive mind, or suggestion, who have the doctrine of suggestion in part in their mind and their being, they're the ones who follow suit, who copy, who are just duplicates of others' ideas. The people who create the ideas are of the God doctrine. They're the leaders. Now, Something is happening in society today which is really strange because you can see the God doctrine and the suggestion doctrine in effect today. Because in society today, around the world, there are messages promoting people to become lovers of the LBGT and gays. So those who are putting this message out are of the God doctrine. Those who receive the messages and turn into homosexuals, lesbians and gays, these are the people of the mold of the suggestion doctrine. So that means something was suggested by those of the God doctrine and many people follow. Black people, many people follow. Orientals, Indian or Asians, many people follow this suggestion from those who are promoting this around the world. But what is strange, that when you do some research, you'll find out that in the Caucasian and light-skinned population or race, they are dying out. That's according to Forbes, the New York Times, the Telegraph, and various statistics that they quote and have managed to put out into the media. Now, if you're dying out as a population of people, why would you do that to your people?